Hey, this is Paolo from the MB Academy and in today's video we have a preset bass member request and he requested this sound from the Linja. So this is the original track. And this is the bass we're going to be making. But before we get started with the video, make sure you get subscribed to the channel, hit the notification bell to not miss any for future videos. And if you want to get access to the preset and the project files, you can become a member of Preset Pass. And you can also make your own requests and gain priority on them. Don't forget that if you want to get more in-depth lessons and tutorials, we have many courses with pro artists and we also have a lot of production resources like presets and sample packs on our website. Just visit dmbacademy.com. So with that being said, let's get into the video. Okay, so here I have an initialized serum and in this video, not only we're going to try to recreate that sound, but we're also going to be looking at some fundamentals for the Delinja bass. But first, let me show you the piano roll so you can follow along with the tutorial. The sequence is very simple. We have E, C sharp and A zero. Now let's go back into serum. And so now let's take a look at how would we recreate that Delinja sound. So if we listen to the reference, first of all, we can hear a lot of noise like this, but it has this very specific, very specific boost on some harmonics. For example, it sounds like if we were to bring a bandpass here, route the noise through it and then have something like this. as you can hear. Then we also have a very distorted sine wave. That sounds like this. Let's distort it a lot. And let's just remove the noise for now. So if we listen to the reference, we can hear that very distorted sine wave, but it also moves like this. Let's see. Now we also hear another movement, which will be the midst of the sound. And it kind of sounds like we are filtering a waveform. For example, if you bring a high pass here, kind of sounds very similar. to that movement right there. But we lack the texture, so let's try to get a different wave table here, for example, Monster 4. Okay. And now we have a more complex waveform, but the tone quality of this is too high. The overall movement of the sound is there, but the formant is not. So we need to find a way to change this formant and that way we can shape our sound to a much cooler state. So one cool technique to do this will be to use the bend uh, plus and minus. It changes the sound from a uh, to a uh, right? And then we can use a filter. As you can see, maybe change it to minus, even more deep. And now we can map an LFO into the cutoff of this filter. And now let's shape our LFO, maybe let's do something like this. Let's remove the BPM function and let's make it slower. Like this. Okay. Let's keep fine tuning this filter. And now let's map this into the wavetable too. Let's also map it into the wavetable position maybe. So as you can see, now we have a cool texture in the mid that does have the formant that we're looking for. And in the process, we're figuring out ways in which we can achieve those transformations of the sound. So for example, if we wanted the sound to evolve as the riff progresses, we would automate this knob right here. Like that. 
And that is exactly what we can do. So we come up an LFO here, make the LFO slower, and then make a rising shape like this. Make it slower and trigger it. Nope, let's turn it off. Mm, we gotta fine tune this. Let's see. Oh, that's cool enough. And then let's add the other parts of the sound, which was the sub or the very distorted sine wave. That's too overwhelming. Let's, let's mix it a bit lower. Okay, that's cool. Let's add the noise too. That's too loud. Let's map another phone into the level. Maybe we can even change the filter. Let's change it to a multi-filter, like a high peak. And now we have an extra filter to add more movement into the midst of the sound. Not joy, joy type of, type of movement. Um, we can also experiment with a notch. That's very cool right there. Now let's go into the effects and let's just add more texture in the sound. Let's turn on the hyper to make it a bit more stereo. Let's add some chorus because, you know, it's a classic. Then let's turn on the compressor. Let's set it on multiband and boost the gain. There you go. And let's add an EQ. And with this EQ, let's just accentuate this um, mid frequencies. Just like that. Now you can always fine tune this. And even modulate it. As you can see, it's just all about how you create the movement and the form of the sound. In this case, I'm just gonna leave it like this. And then I'm gonna use another filter. And with this filter, um, we can use it as an overall gain control of the sound. So this will help us to have a kind of a push and pull dynamic in the sound that was lost because of so much distortion and compression, which was getting rid of the dynamics, but we're using this filter as tremulator, sort of, to, to bring back those dynamics. Cool, so this is good enough inside of Serum. As you can see, this uh, fundamental principle of the sound was the distorted sub. And then this texture that came from this web table and the filtering movement. Uh, but not only that, uh, also the formant shifting thanks to some warping modes like Ben Plus. We can also try asymmetrical. That one is also cool. As you can see, in this case, we're gonna leave it with Ben minus, and now let's jump into a bit of post-processing. So for post-processing, I wanna show you a few tricks that I do to play a bit more with the format of the sound and change this texture. So to begin, we have this phaser right here. So if we had a phaser, by default, it'll come like this. But you can play with the frequency. And it'll give you a different format. So what I did, it was bringing this frequency all the way to 70 hertz. And then as you can see, I automated it like this. So in the sound, it'll look like this. And now for the EQ, this is a very weird EQ. This is definitely not useful for mixing, but it is useful to shape our sound. So we have a lot of lows and a lot of mids. Just accentuating the harmonics that I really like. So without it, versus with it, which has a little bit more body. And by body, I mean the low harmonics. Then we have another phaser. 
And then we have this plugin by Sound Toys called Little Alter Boy. And as you can see, it says monophonic voice manipulation. So we're using this plugin that is meant to be on vocals to change the format of our sound. So by default, it's like this. Now we can change it to a more positive morphing or to a more low. In this case, I left it there. You can also play with this pitch knob. But in this case, I only use the formant. Then I used an EQ. And with this EQ, I just shaped which parts of the sound do I want to be more resonant. As you can see, this also helps changing the formant because it makes some harmonics more prominent via emulating those resonances that come through your throat when you are making sound with your voice. So in this case, I'm actually gonna change it there because I like it better there now. Then we have another filter. And then we have one final EQ. So this is it for the processing of the sound. But now let's go back into the serum patch turn the sub and the noise. And let's play with the mix of all of these oscillators. So this will be the very fundamentals of this type of sound. Now we can also add a bit of reverb and it's not advisable to add reverb to a bass, but we just want to make it more dirty and busy in terms of frequencies to make it sound to make it sound less digital when we play it on top of the drum. So there you go. Those will be the principles behind the Delinja bass. I hope this illustrated how you can approach this type of sounds. If this video was helpful, please let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to not miss any of your future videos. And if you wanna get access to the preset in the project files, you can become a member of preset pass. The link is in the description below. Also, don't forget that if you want to get more in-depth lessons and tutorials, we have many courses with pro artists and we also have a lot of production resources like presets and sample packs on our website. You just got to visit dmbacademy.com. So that's going to be it for today. Thanks for watching. Hope you have a nice day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.